Hey, I'm Dr. Rich. In this video, I'm going to root canal this tooth. This is a canine brought to me by a patient. So this isn't a tooth that I extracted. This tooth actually fell out on its own uh, and the patient brought it in. As you can see, it's pretty worn down. Tip is worn away. It's also got a very big white filling. So I'm going to root canal this so you can actually see how we do that. You'll be able to see, you might be able to see a little bit through the side of the tooth and you'll see the files emerge out the apex. So before we start, let me show you the x-ray of the tooth that I'm going to be working on. You can see the top part is all worn away and cupped out from wear and tear. And then you can see the nerve space going right down the middle. That's that dark area. Let me highlight that for you so you notice it. And then this big white blob in the center of the tooth is a white filling, basically a composite resin filling that was placed there. So this is the angle that we take x-rays at when they're in a person's mouth. So this is the view I would have seen if this person came in with a toothache and this was the tooth that was bothering them. But luckily, since this tooth is no longer in somebody's mouth, I can rotate the tooth a little bit and take an x-ray from the side. So this would be as if the x-ray is being taken from in between the teeth. And as you can see, the white filling is into the nerve space. I'm gonna outline, here's the white filling outlined in blue and there's the nerve space outlined in yellow. And it's the nerve space up towards the top is wider than further down the root because that's the pulp chamber that's the big area of the tooth. So that is all gonna get cleaned out when we do the root canal. So let's get to it. So the first step is to get into the nerve space. So for the access, I'm just gonna use a drill bit, a high speed drill. So basically, since this tooth is so worn down, I can just go straight through the wear, worn area. If this tooth was a solid virgin tooth, I'd have to come in it from the back side of it. So here we go. Let me check to see if we're in there. I think we are. And use my number 10 file to see if I into the nerve chamber. There we go. Into the chamber. Just open that chamber, you know, that opening a little bit more. Once I'm into the nerve chamber, first rotary file I'm going to use is a pathfinder file. This just kind of it establishes the glide path for my rest of my instruments. Just work it in and out. Now normally, while well, if I'm doing this for real on a person's tooth, I'll be using some irrigant in here, some, uh, some sodium hypochlorite, basically some diluted bleach. It'll act as a lubricant. What I'll do with this tooth, since it's just an extracted tooth, I'm just gonna use some, just some regular water and we'll rinse that out. Okay, so now that we have that opened up, now we can go to the next step, let me, Let's switch the tooth around and we'll look to get in some patency. Okay, got the tooth set up again so you guys can see better. So again, we're gonna take my number 10 file and work it all the way out the root tip. So 
long tooth. I don't see it coming out the tip yet. You just remove that stopper. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to a longer file. This is the next file up too, it's a number 15, but it's also a bit longer. All right, so that'll give us enough length so you'll be able to see it come out the root tip. And just working it back and forth, watch winding motion, just twist it back and forth and just let it slowly advance. around so maybe you can see a little bit better. Should be close to the apex. Let's see if we can see it coming out. Where's the apex? See it anywhere there? I think that's the apex right at the root tip. Yep, there it is. See it against my glove there? There's the root. And there's the file coming out the root tip. So now we know how long. Let me just pull that back a little bit so we're flush. So that is how long the nerve canal of that tooth is. So let's put that rubber stopper down so we have a marking point. And again, let me stick it a little bit past so you can see it. See it coming out there? Right there. It's pretty small, pretty fine, hard to see. But there it is. There, right there. So we want to pull it just inside, and that's going to be the length that we clean the inside of the tooth out to. Hold it back in, mark it. So on a real tooth and a real person, to find that length, I mean, obviously you can't look at it uh, like you can with an extracted tooth. We would take a, either use a electronic apex locator device or we would uh, base it on x-rays. So before electronic locator, apex locators were available, we commonly, we would put the file in, take an x-ray, see where the tip is, and do that until we got it where we wanted it. Now with the electronic apex locators, uh, it's much simpler just to use those. Okay, so let me put the tooth back in my little clamp. And now we're ready to shape. Okay, so I'm using nickel titanium rotary files. Uh, these are made by Edge Endo. Measure the length. So we're right at about 24 millimeters in length for the for this initial file. That's what we set. Uh, you know, at the apex is a little bit further, but this is our working length. What we're going to clean to. So 24 millimeters. So that file was a num was a number 15 file. I'm going to use a number 17 rotary file. It's kind of a half step up, and we go right to 24 millimeters. And then the endo stopper tells me how far to go. And these files just rotate, spin, stick them in the tooth. 
to the canal. Let's find the canal. It's a much weirder angle than I'm used to. Usually I'm looking straight down. There we go. And then we just brush, brush it up and down against the side of the tooth, circumferentially all the way around. Clean from time to time. And basically what we're doing with this is we're gonna work this file all the way down till we till we till the rubber stopper hits the tooth, and then I'll know that I cleaned it to the length I wanted it to to be cleaned. Just work it in and out. The drill on the motor I'm using for this handpiece too has a torque sensor. So if it feels like the file is going to get stuck and it might possibly break, it'll sense it and it will basically turn off and start spinning backwards. So it won't let me. And it helps to try to avoid breaking the files. And then also these files are pretty much single use. This is an old set I'm using that I cleaned up, but they're gonna to be tossed after this. So you keep cleaning. A lot of times it's you need to clean the top part of the tooth just to get down to the root tip. There we go. Clean off the flutes of the file. In addition to the sodium hypochlorite, we'll also use some lubricants too to make this whole process easier. I'm not using them uh, for this video just because it makes it easier. Okay, so then on to the next file. Next file is a number 20. So check the length, and again, we want that to be about 24 millimeters. Okay. 24 millimeters, so this file is the next one, a little bit bigger. So in between each file too, we would rinse out the inside of the tooth with the sodium hypochlorite. And because in addition to disinfecting, the sodium hypochlorite will also dissolve any of the nerve tissue, you know, the nerve tissue or blood vessels, any bacteria that's in the tooth while we're cleaning it out. I always joke with my patients and tell them whenever they come in for a root canal, it's actually pretty boring. There's, I'm doing a lot of stuff, but you're just sitting there with your mouth open and the rubber dam on your tooth. Sometimes what I'll do too, if this file's a little tight getting in there, I'll use the next file up in size. That'll help me. Uh, so the next file up is a 25, 24 millimeters again. And I'll just use this a little bit to make a little bit more room. And then I'll go back down a size 
to uh, use the next file. And again, you don't want to use, uh, let me put a little bit of water in there to as, act as a lubricant. You want to use excessive pressure because file breaks off and it's not going to be fun. Not the end of the world. The broken file usually just gets incorporated in the root canal filling at the end of the day. But if you can avoid it, you're better off. Okay, let's go back to the number 20 file. There, it's easier to get down to, to full length with the number 20 file now. So again, And then from time to time, I'll also take my initial files to make sure I can get it past, past that length because you don't want to plug up that hole. You, want to, you don't want to clean and shape past it, but you don't want to plug it up. There you can see the tip of the file coming out the root tip. Good, so we're not plugged up yet. All right, so we got number 20 to length. Go to number 25 again. And then this, the, the size file that you end up with uh, kind of depends on the shape and size of the tooth. So this is number 25. I tend to like to take my, you know, unless it's a really tiny tooth, I like to take it at least up to a size number 30. So that'd be the next one after this. Everybody's got a little bit dis different philosophy though too, because I know people who, uh, you know, one, one dentist who will use a number 20 for everything. He just files all the way around, make sure he cleans everything up. And that's pretty much almost the only file he'll use in our, you know, only rotary file he'll use. We're getting the 25 to length, great. And let's get up to the 30. And then he'll just match, you know, when he goes to fill it, he'll match the, uh, the gutta percha cone to the size of the tooth. I just like going up to a 30, you know, I try to do a minimum of a 30 on most teeth. Some I'll do bigger straight tooth like this because it is straight. There's no sharp hooks or curves. You can actually get away with doing a much, uh, you can get away with using a much bigger file because it's straight, there's no sharp bends. If the tooth had a pretty sharp bend, I would, you know, go smaller. I'd even stop at a 25. Depends, the really, really sharp bends. I refer those out to the root canal specialist, the endodontist. That's what they're trained to do. They do those every day. I don't do them very often. I don't do those really sharp hooks. If I can avoid it, just makes it more complicated. Okay, 30 is going down to length, excellent. And you can see all the debris that's coming out on the flutes. That's all material from inside the tooth. In this case, everything was dead before we started. Uh, but then there's also shavings from the inside of the root canal as we're moving those, as we're cleaning that up. So the next size after 30 is number 35. This is a different brand file. This one's much stiffer than the last one was. You can see the difference. These are, these are nickel titanium and they'll actually bend. And this one's a little bit stiffer. So this one I'm gonna do with a little bit different action too. So instead of it rotating, just spinning, I'm gonna use this uh, because it is stiffer and it's reciprocating. It's just gonna twist back and forth. Can you see that? Just zipping back and forth. But we use it the same way basically, just to clean, scrape it along the sides of the teeth. And again, you just wanna work it up and down. This is an older file, I don't use this one use these very much anymore. I've switched pretty much all to the uh, real flexible nickel titanium ones. 
just personal preference. I always found this kind of herky jerky reciprocating motion a little kind of freaky. Let me clean that off. So this is just an old file that I had left over. But again, we worked it all the way down to number 40. Great. And another, and what I like to do with these after I use them as a back and forth reciprocating motion, I switch it back to rotating and the rotational helps, you know, it's like a, it's like a corkscrew. It helps pull out any debris from inside. So I like to use that to kind of clean up afterwards. Great. And one last double check with number 15. We'll see, make sure we can get it out to root tip. And there we, there we go, there it is. See it, I'm gonna pull it in and out a couple times. So we're not blocked in. So this way we can seal the, you know, once it's all cleaned out, we can put the root canal sealer material in and it'll seal the inside of the tooth. Next, I'm gonna throw up a couple x-rays and just show you guys how the tooth looks with this file in it, with the Pathfinder file all the way out through there, and then also with the number 40 file at its working link, just so you guys can get an idea. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.